What's going on today, YouTube? So today what we're gonna be doing is adding the service layer to our candy shop application. If you guys haven't been following along, I would recommend you go check out uh, my previous videos and catch up so you can follow along easier. Or if you just want a quick, uh, simple solution, check out my other video on adding service layer to Hexarch um, Golang app. And with that being said, we'll just jump right into it. So like I said before, in our previous video, we did a quick little, um, we just created a quick little function to, to make sure our, our connection and query was working inside of our, uh, our storage Cassandra.go file where we connected our Cassandra database and we will be adding a service layer to our app. So yeah, let's go ahead and do it. We'll create a new folder. I thought I already created it, but it disappeared. Uh, it's called reading. In here, we're gonna call it service.go. And within this file, we have to declare that it's a part of the reading package. And here we're gonna have three important um, things. We're gonna have two interfaces and a struct. The first interface is going to be a repository. And the second interface will be a service. And everything we add inside of this file, every function that we create inside of this service.go file will uh, implement the uh, service and repository interfaces. And the final thing we want is a service struct that has a repository in it. And now what we want to do is create a new function called a uh, new service that will declare a new service using our uh, repository that we define inside our main.go file. But yeah, so our uh, repository and it's going to return a type of service. And here we will do a return statement with service and pass in our repository. And there we go. Now we're able to call this function inside of our uh, main.go file and we can use whatever functions we define in here. Uh, so yeah, now that we did that, we can go and comment this section out. By the way, all of this, I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video, all of this code will be on GitHub under the uh, part three tag or the V3 tag. I forget which, which one it was. This was the application running. Um, if you go over to tags here, you'll see uh, there's V1, V2, and then this will be V3. So yeah, feel free to check that out. Um, where were we? We were creating the service. Here we are defining a new variable called rs for reading service and we're calling reading.newService to get that. And what we want to do with this reading.service, oh sorry, we need to pass in the repository as well. Now what we want to do with this reading service uh, variable is actually pass it into our, our handler function our initialize handlers fu function. So uh, this will all make sense in a second. We'll, uh, we're gonna find, define all of our services here and then pass it into our, our handler functions. And then inside of our handler, we will have access to all of those uh, wonderful functions that we define inside of our services. So yeah, let's go over here to our handler.go file and declare this reading dot service that way it's expecting a, a rs a reading service and let's go ahead and define a new endpoint to test out some of this logic that we are adding to our application so it's going to be 
API slash candies and the handler will be called uh, get all candies handler. And here is where we're going to want to pass in that reading service. And we also only want to allow the get uh, HTTP method. So now let's go and define this function inside of our handle reading.go. We can honestly copy most of this stuff. The only things we need to change is this part candy get all candies handler I hope that matches and it does and make sure we're passing in a reading service here reading that service so now we can access uh, our reading service all of our functions within it. Right now we don't have anything defined, but we will. So let's go in there and define some functions. We already have a function defined inside of our repository. Uh, and that was called get all candy names. So what we're gonna wanna do is get this uh, function signature and go inside of our reading service and pass that in our repository interface so we know that we have access to that function now uh, through this R repository. So next thing we want to do is declare a function with the signature type we'll call it S, the, uh, re sorry, receiver type of service and the signature is the exact same. And here is where the magic happens. This is where we can access our repository and all the functions within it. So as you can see, we're calling s.r.getAllCandyNames, which is this function, which is the function defined inside of our repository or our storage package. So uh, we can look at the the signature up here and see that it returns as a string and an error. So um, since we are getting a candy slice or a slice of candies, we can define that variable as CS and error. And we could do a quick if error not equal to nil, we will return uh, nil and the error. Uh, and if, if everything is good, we can just return the candy slice and the error as nil. So now that is uh, it for our service file for now. Um, now what we want to do is go within, go inside of that get all candies handler and access that function. So since this reading service is of type reading service, we could do um, rs dot, it's not working, Auto, or, autofill is not working. Um, did we pass that in here? We did there and there, oops. Let's make sure that's saved, go in here. Reading service, yep, that's there. I think VS Code is just being weird. Anyway, we should be able to access the, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, this is the issue. We, we have to pass in the same signature inside of this service interface, there we go. Now, whenever we reference uh, this service interface, we have access to the same exact to, sorry, we to this function here. So this this uh, signature is tied to this function, and this signature is tied to this function, which is inside of this package. Cool. So now, if we go back to our handler, 
we should be able to access our function. And there we go. So uh, again, this function returns a slice of string and an error. So uh, candy slice and error. Here we're gonna be handling the error a little bit differently. So if error does not equal to nil, what we wanna do is actually return HTTP error which takes in a writer, a response writer, uh, some sort of string, and a status code. So we are going to do a HTTP status internal server error just because this is just a simple get request and there really shouldn't be much reasoning of why uh, this shouldn't work on our end if it's an issue. Um, if there is an issue, it's initializing or connecting to the database or making a query to the database. So we don't want the user to know exactly what it is. Um, so here we can say cannot process uh, your, I don't know why I'm capitalizing everything, process your request at this time. And now if everything's all good and dandy, uh, we can return this candy slice instead of this welcome. Oops, I didn't even copy it. <laughs> it's candy slice. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we are all set up. We can delete this code and run and test our server and make sure that endpoint works. Now, uh, just to show you guys here, before I run this, let me connect to um, my local Cassandra instance and uh, show you guys what we currently have inside of the database. Um, we're in the candy shop DB and what we wanna do is uh, select all from candies, I think is the name of the table. Oopsies, that should be, that should not be an L. Why did it, oh, it did. Select all from candies. And there we go, we should see KitKat and Skittles. Uh, in our browser or Postman, if you use that, because here we're only select we're only selecting all the names from the candies table. So let me exit this and rerun our um, server. So once this is running, we can go over here and hit our local host endpoint and that is API slash candies, and there you go. There is, that's exactly what we were expecting, and how to implement a service layer within the hex, within our candy shop application, which is currently modeled under the hexagonal architecture model. So if, uh, if you guys found this video useful or handy in any way, uh, shape or form. <laughs> Make sure you like and subscribe. Helps out a lot. Share this video with anybody who you think would be interested in this. And um, yeah, uh, check out the other videos if you're new. Also, again, I'll be tagging uh, this code to the master branch. And again, to access that is you go to the link in the description to the repository, it's inside of YouTube Tutorials, Candy Shop, and you can either copy master, which is gonna be whatever current uh, code I'm, th the latest finished code that I have today or in the future. Um, but if you want this specific one, it'll be under v3.0. So with that being said, I'm signing off. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, share, and I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.